Welcome to the marketing committee meeting for August. Um, you probably already have this info if you're here, but it's the same Zoom link every single month. Uh, we're really happy everybody made it in. Uh, the next thing is this call will be recorded. Um, so we're gonna be starting the recording right now or Christy, can you start the recording? Uh, yep. This is just so for people, that people that can't attend can watch it afterwards. Also the slide decks um, are always um, online too. Um, so feel free to do that. So the meeting is now being recorded. So anything you do or say will be used against you in a court of, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, also our next call is Wednesday, September 1st, uh, the first Wednesday of every single month at 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, five o'clock uh, Central European time. Um, this is a open meeting. Uh, please don't violate antitrust laws. We don't wanna have um, lawyers coming into this meeting. Uh, we wanna keep it fun and you know talk about the fun marketing things. Um, so with that, I think we'll probably jump right into the agenda. So kicking it off with announcements, I will hand it over to Charlie to talk about the updates uh, on the end user stories program. Charlie, are you here? Oh no, there we go. Now you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank God. I was like, I've seen people nodding. I was like, is that nodding to agree or nodding going, ah, uh -uh, girl. Um, so yeah, I was just actually chattering away saying I love that half the hour chat. It's 5 p.m. here in Berlin and I am so ready to go and like <laughs> crack a cold beer. Um, but beforehand, um, I wanted to update you all on the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation end user stories. So for folks who were here for the last meeting um, in July or for anyone who watched it um, after the fact, we proposed a couple of ideas around expanding the reach of our case studies. And this is the result of that. And I'm really excited to present it to you today. Please like use the chat or even hop in with any questions and feedback you might have, or we can also have a, a little chat later. So what we've been doing for, for you know years, since 2017 when we launched our case studies program is working with end users to tell stories, tell stories about the real world use cases and the impacts that you know, CNCF projects are having on businesses. We're using specific narratives, but what we want to start doing is really showcasing participating organizations as leaders in their field as well. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please, Bill. And that's why we want to build on the success of the case studies. Another big reason of this is, I think as we all know, the community has grown. We are such a large community now. And on one hand, that's fantastic. And I love being able to meet people from all over the world. But on the other hand, we're now getting to the stage where we can't manage all the requested case studies end to end that are coming in. And one of my biggest fears is, you know, working content side at CNCF is that folks start to lose out. And that's one thing I do not want to happen. So we know you've got these amazing stories to tell. We know that you're telling them every day to your customers, to your communities. And we want to expand the opportunity for you to share these stories through CNCF. We want you to be able to use different mediums. Um, and we can talk about this a little bit more on the next slide, Bill. Oh, uh, this is a nice little uh, heart back to what I said earlier. We heard you, we really did. Um, last time in the marketing committee meeting, we actually asked, you know, do you folks want to do end user case studies? Most of you said yes, which was really heartening to me. But what was even more heartening to me was over 90% of you said you were completely open to new storytelling formats. So for example, uh, submitting YouTube videos, um, participating in webinars like the online programs, and you're also open to submitting your own case studies, of course, like with editorial support that we can provide you. Um, next slide, please. So that's why we are expanding things for you. Um, the old sort of case studies program, as it were, is expanding to the end user stories program. And we've got a ton of different elements that you can take advantage of. 
So first of all, of course, you can still publish a written case study with us. And I will actually talk a little bit more about this later because we've slightly changed the process there. One of the biggest things to note here is that we're opening the case studies to any end user organization working with graduated or incubating projects. You don't have to be a member. Um, and we also just want to point out as well that members, you know, so vendor members who are building and selling technical solutions, we're still not accepting case studies because we want to be vendor neutral, but you can write about your end users. Um, and we will obviously ensure that, you know, you're well represented in the case study. Of course, you did all the hard work, um, but it's another opportunity for you to be to be featured and, and leverage that for your promotion cycles. We're also going to be, ugh, pardon me, going to be introduced something, something called the end user journey report. Now we're working on the very first iteration um, with Spotify. And what we want to do is really demonstrate how organizations have grown as technology leaders through the use of cloud native technologies. Right now, it's open to platinum and gold end user members. Um, obviously, this is the beta version. We're going to see how it goes for three to six months, um, and potentially we can expand that um, at later dates. There's also the opportunity to participate in the end user lounge live stream. Uh, so this is, of course, open to all end user members. Um, and this is a, a really nice option. So perhaps if you don't have a lot of time to be investing in writing, investing in filming, organizing webinars, this is a, a really great opportunity to sort of talk about the technical side of, of implementation. One-on-one um, -on -one, uh, with Katie Gamanji, um, of course, who works on the Oh my gosh, what is Katie's position in CNCF? I always wonder this, she's a technical advocate. Um, so you often see her on stage uh, at various conferences around the world. And the end user lounge is quite new. It's around four months old, but we've had some fantastic conversations on there so far. So that's another thing you can leverage. Um, and of course, there is the online programs. Um, you've all been introduced to this already. This is run by Christy and Bill. Um, but there are a number of elements in this that you can definitely kind of think of in terms of case studies, particularly if you want to submit videos to our YouTube channel, you're really welcome to do that. You can also submit videos, perhaps you've recorded it for something else, um, but you think, hey, actually this is, it's vendor neutral, it's talking about cloud native technologies, we can upload it to the CNCF channel. Um, all the guidelines are on GitHub and there is a link here as, uh, as you can see so please feel free to like click through read a little bit more or uh, reach out to me for any further information oh my god katie thank you so much for jumping in you are the ecosystem advocate <laughs> sometimes i forget what everyone does in cnc um could you go to the next slide please bill cool um i won't spend too long on this slide but it, it's just a kind of give folks an idea of the eligibility requirements. So of course, written case studies um, open to all end user members and all end users who maybe aren't end user members yet. Uh, January reports, just platinum and gold members or end user members for the moment, potentially will expand that in the future. Um, the end user lounge, of course, is, is open to end users, but do you have a chat um, if you're an ambassador or a project? Um, Members, and just to reiterate again, members are thought of as, as vendors. So you are using cloud native tools to build technical solutions that you then sell to, to other companies. We still want to keep things vendor neutral, but you can write case studies and you can submit about your end users. Um, and the next one, Bill. I won't spend long on this slide. You've already probably all seen this before. This is the online programs eligibility. Um, there's just a couple of things to note around the number of live activities uh, that you can take advantage of in each quarter, but that's all there for you guys to, to have a look at later. Um, and on to the next slide. So, of course, uh, how do you start uh, actually taking advantage of any of these elements? We've got a little proposal form set up for case studies and end user journey reports. So if you'd like to be involved in either of those, uh, use the lovely forms that we've set up for you. Um, and of course, you can go to the online programs uh, repo on GitHub, and that will give you all the information about what you need to do to take advantage of that. 
Um, and of course, if there's any questions, any feedback, reach out to us at case studies at cncf.io. And you can, of course, get me on Slack as well. I'm Charlie Mann on the CNCF channels. Um, and with that, I was going to talk a little bit more about case studies after I've had a drink. OK, so I, I mentioned earlier that we were talking about self-service case studies. We've had really good feedback, actually, anecdotally. I've been talking with about five or six um, different end user members who are really interested in doing this. So we've actually started working with a couple of them already. So again, this is a beta version of the process. Of course, we'll iterate on it, um, you know, with the input and feedback from all of you. But we're excited to, you know, be expanding this option for, for everyone. I'm just seeing a couple of things in the chat. Ah, from Stephanie. <coughs> Pardon me. So basically, we as CNCF are trying to move away from doing all of the writing. And I think that's explained a little bit more here on this slide is that we have so many members now. We literally cannot manage end to end writing, um, managing the approvals process, particularly for larger companies. Um, as well as we all know in marketing, the second you get the legal team involved, you know, things tend to move really slowly. Um, and my biggest fear working on the content side of things is that folks are going to miss out. And that's the one thing I, I really don't want to happen. Um, and if you can move to the next slide, Bill. Um, so as this, this lovely Oprah uh, meme says, we want everybody to get case studies. Um, we want to empower you to be able to leverage this option. We want to expedite the sign-off process. Um, and that's why we're asking folks work with us in a partnership on this. If you can be writing the case study, we can be supporting you in the promotion. We can be supporting you in terms of getting this in front of a very large audience um, through our website, through our social media channels. Um, but we also ask that you partner with us in please, you know, cross post things on your social, link to things in your newsletter to your followers, um, you know, leverage your company blog. And I can talk a little bit more about the process in the next coming slides. So as I mentioned earlier, we are opening the eligibility criteria. So it's any organization who's working with our incubating or graduating projects, you don't necessarily have to be a paid member, but you do need to be an end user. Or if you're a vendor member, you can write about your end users. Um, next one, Bill. So our new process goes something like this. And of course, this is just the beta version. So we can change this, we can iterate on it in the future. First, we'd love you to submit a proposal for a case study you'd like to do, um, we will come back to you within 20 days to either say, yes, please go ahead, or we might need further information. The further information I've been requesting so far, just anecdotally from the last month in doing this, has been more around vendors talking a little bit too heavily about the products and what they're selling, rather than what the benefit and the use cases have been at the end user companies. At the creation stage, it's obviously the, I say the end user here drafts the case study. It doesn't necessarily have to be the end user. It can be someone in your marketing team, someone in your PR team. Um, if you're a, a vendor member, obviously you're not the end user, um, but you're still writing it on their behalf. Of course, in this stage, like we do give you full support. We make sure that you have all of the content that you need, all the requirements you need, and we are here to, to support you. Um, and with the editing stage, so once you've got your draft ready and submitted it to us, all we want to do is edit to ensure community standards, vendor neutrality, and alignment with the style guide, which we've got on GitHub. Um, we're not in the business of telling you how to write and telling you how to tell your stories. Um, and then at the end, it's published. Um, and of course, as for anyone who was here the other week, we are now publishing case studies on the homepage 
other websites, they become the big hero image that you see when you land on the cncf.io. It's driving around 500 extra views a week um, to the case studies featured there. So we found this to be a, a really positive boost. Um, of course, we promote things through our social media. We often promote things through our blogs. Um, occasionally, if you've actually used one project quite heavily, um, your case study will be replicated as well um, on the particular project's blog. And if you go to the next slide, Bill. And I just wanted to give you a quick example of how this can look in practice. So this was a, a very kind of early version uh, that we worked with the absolutely lovely team at Buoyant. So they actually completely off their own backs wrote a fantastic case study um, all about a Linkerd based solution at Elkyop, which is one of the, uh, the biggest uh, retail like, supermarkets um, in the Nordics. So, we did a, a really quick editing process with them, again, just to ensure vendor neutrality that we were using the same language. Uh, less than a month later, Elkyop, of course, the end user in this case, had approved the case study and it was published um, and on our homepage the next day. Again, I think this, this worked so well is because there was a really good partnership there with Boyan. They were obviously really invested in the process. Um, and worked very closely with Elkyop to, to make this happen so quickly. But again, this is a, it's a beta process. We can all iterate on this together, but I wanted to, to show you how quickly um, this can happen compared to you know, how slowly sometimes case studies can, can work in the traditional sense. Um, and the next slide please, Bill, is again, how to, to leverage it. If you would like to submit a case study, um, just fill in the form, send us a proposal, and we'll get back to you within 20 working days. Um, and if you have absolutely any questions or feedback, again, please feel free to email the case studies email address. You can email me, I'm charlie.man at cncf.io, and of course you can reach me on Slack as well at any time. Um, I'm just having a quick look through the chat questions to see if anything came through. Um, Rob, Rob, actually, I have an answer for you um, that we're going to be showing slightly later um, in this presentation that was based on feedback um, from the last meeting we were in as well. So we will uh, we'll move on to that shortly. Um, did anyone like have any questions at all just off the top of their heads? I'm, I'm really happy to, to answer before we move on to the next section. Sure, Charlie, just to give a little bit of context on my question about metrics. Yeah. Um, I've I've got to, you know, to work with our team of writers to get resources, I've got to make the quantitative justification of if we publish our case study on CNCF, A, it's good for the community, but B, it's going to have a substantially more reach or promotion than if we were to just publish it on our own uh, company homepage. So yeah, absolutely. And I'll look forward to those metrics and thanks in advance for pulling those together. Yeah, it's it's no problem. We haven't got things quite ready yet that you can actually go and, and click on them live yourself, um, but they're very much in the final draft stage. And I can show you the one that we've prepared for the blogs now. We've also got a case study one in the works. So yeah, I, I completely understand. Um, and also in terms of cross-posting between you know, CNCF homepage and also your own company homepage, we heartily encourage that. Um, and I'm also happy as well, if you want to publish something on your homepage first and you want us to wait seven days and send us a canonical link to make sure that it's driving traffic to you, that's absolutely fine. Like this is, it's a partnership. If both people are putting in the work, we want to make sure that we're all benefiting from it. And um, with that, shall I pass back to Bill? Cool, thanks for that, Charlie. Um, and I'm really excited to see the case study program really grow out of this. And, um, next, we have Vanessa to talk about um, like the health and safety protocol. Um, 
In case people are wondering, this schedule will also be coming out today for KubeCon, uh, Cloud NativeCon North America. And in case you've forgotten, it's October in LA and virtually too. Um, it's also your last chance to sponsor CNCF hosted or co-located events. So with that, um, Vanessa, do you want to talk about the health and safety? Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, the schedule is live. So if you, um, we didn't have a chance to update it on the deck yet, but um, if you want to go to the website, you'll be able to see it. Super excited to announce that today. Um, so as Bill said, um, we also have some new health and safety protocols um, that we announced and we have a blog going out about it later this afternoon or later today. Um, as you all are aware, we are requiring a vac fully vac requiring you to be fully vaccinated um, to come on site and attend the uh, event in person. Um, we have been updating the um, vaccines that are that are approved by the World Health Organization. You can see those here. And we just um, recommend that you continue to check back because um, a couple of new ones have been added recently and we'll do that as they get approved. Uh, next slide, Bill. Um, the new uh, health and safety protocol is that we will be in um, enforcing a, a mass mandate. This is in accordance with um, LA County as well. And we feel that this is the best way to protect everybody's health. Um, in addition to requiring the vaccines, um, exceptions will be for um, in outdoor spaces, which we have actually quite a bit of ample outdoor space in LA. So we're excited to be able to um, have that space and offer a place to take a mass break. Um, take your lunch, have a snack, drink your coffee outside. Um, so that will be a great place. Um, some other social distancing and limited room capacity. Some of these things we went over on the last call, so um, I won't go through everything here. <clears throat> but we are reducing our um, conference room capacities and including wider aisles and distance seating. Can go to the next one. Um, we are, are also going to require daily temperature checks. Um, when you enter the event zone uh, for the first time each day, you'll be given a sticker to put on your badge indicating that you've gone through that check and then you won't have to uh, go through it again. Um, we will also be providing wristbands. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got something in my throat. Give me just one second. So sorry about that. Um, as I said, we will providing be providing wristbands, green, yellow, or red, which will indicate um, an attendee's comfort level with their uh, with social distancing. And next slide, please. Um, again, these are some of the things we went through on the last call, but we will have hand sanitizer, cleaning wipes readily available. We will be um, cleaning uh, microphones in between speakers, reducing our touch points wherever possible. Um, we'll have staff monitoring booth traffic and lines in the sponsor uh, showcase. Um, and again, I think these are a couple things are redundant there, apologies. Um, and I think that's the last slide. Is that the last one, Bill? Yep. And yep. now we Cool. And I think there's some questions coming through here. So let me take a look. Yeah, here I can read them to you. So the first one is how will meals be handled? So the meals um, will be grab and, grab and go. It's not going to be buffet style. Um, all of the uh, catering staff will be required to uh, have masks and um, wear gloves. Um, we will have outdoor seating for lunches and meals, um, and there will be very specific designated uh, food and beverage zones. Cool. Um, the next one is, will you pay <coughs> for a fax card as proof ahead of time? I think there's a fax card, like day of, like what are, like how to, I think the question is, how do you prove that you're vaccinated? 
we will have some information coming um, about the, the verification app very soon. I don't have all the details to share today, um, but you can expect that about a month out. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, the next one from Lexi, will you still hold social events? Uh, yes, we are still planning to mm -hmm. um, hold social events and those will be incorporating the same um, the, the same protocols um, for the all attendee party. We don't we haven't announced the location yet, um, but it is a, a venue with uh, lots of outdoor space. And, you know, that's that's key there. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited to see. That's always one of my favorite parts of the event. Mine the too. Event party. I have lots of good memories um, and meeting lots of nice people. Um, do you have the current live registration numbers or can you share them? Um, we're not sharing them uh, right now, but let me see if I can get, let me check in with the wider team to see what we're comfortable with sharing at the moment. <clears throat> Okay, maybe you can give us yeah the, the registrations are are they're they're looking pretty good. The schedule announcement goes out today, and we see a typically see a um, a big jump in registration after the the schedule is announced. Okay, thanks. Um, this sounds like great news for public health and safety. Will these policies apply to all Linux Foundation hybrid events, including Open Source Summit in Seattle at the end of September? Yes, they will. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, will there be any guidelines or restrictions on capacities for sponsor hosted events like receptions parties related to KubeCon, but not but hosted by sponsors instead of CNCF? <clears throat> um, we have been sharing our um, guidelines. There aren't any restrictions. Um, it is up to the sponsor to, um, you know, to, to set what their uh, what their guidelines and what their parameters are going to be. Um, but we you know, recommend taking similar, if not the same precautions that we're taking, um, but we aren't uh, enforcing those because those are not run by CNCF. Okay. And how will the official KubeCon be, party be handled with masks and enhanced social distancing? <clears throat> yeah, so the same, um, protocols will be will be implemented at the all attendee party. Um, again, we do have quite a bit of outdoor space for the all attendee party. So, um, you know, at, uh, masks can be taken off outdoors. We will be incorporating, um, you know, socially distanced tables so people can spread out. Does that answer that question? We will have more details um, on the all attendee party once um, thing, the venue is finalized and we announce that location. Yep. Um, if you're <laughs> to 100% virtual, when do you expect the notice to be to provided to sponsors? I'm sorry, Bill, can you repeat that one? Yeah, if you were to pivot to 100% virtual, when do you expect notice to be provided to sponsors? Um, we are not planning to um, pivot to 100% virtual. Um, we, this is, we're, we're going to be in LA. Um, so our, our decision isn't changing unless, unless we're forced to. Okay, um, the next one. Uh, my company is starting to block it going to live events. Uh, any recommendations? Uh, my company is starting to what? Balk, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah like... Uh not be excited about going. Yeah, not going. Um, I would share um, our health and safety um, page with them so they can see you know, everything that we're doing to uh, provide as safe of an environment as we can. For, for um, what it's worth on that last one, my company has a no live events policy. We had to get uh, executive vice president approval to attend the event. Uh, we did that, and if you want some help with the justification, I'd be glad to help. Uh, this is one of those events that I think is so important that uh, we're able to get our CMO to approve attendance. We were, Rob, we were in the same boat at Cisco. It's a no live event policy through the end of the year, but we made the business case to be at KubeCon, and we are looking forward to it. And hey, you only live once, right? 
Um, <laughs> I, I really appreciate the work that uh, the team is doing oh, on the health and no safety kidding. as no you know, not just a YOLO, but a, you know, as someone who's got three kids who can't get the vaccine yet, y'all are really doing great work to yeah. make sure that we're all gonna be, uh, if we participate, we're gonna be maximizing our safety. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, and Vanessa, you said, I just to clarify, you said it'd be about another month before you have the, like the official process for the proof yeah. of vaccination. Yes, okay. correct. Okay, okay. Cause I, you know, I went through the registration process and I know, I knew that the vaccination proof was going to be required. And I was actually kind of surprised that it wasn't part of the actual registration process, but knowing it's gonna be, I'm sure we'll see it in the sponsor portal and all the stuff that you guys send out, but um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and thanks for that. We're glad to hear that um, you value the event so much and, uh, and coming to it and we're excited to see both of you um, in LA. So I just I, miss people, Bill. I just want to see people. In, <laughs> I just want. Too, honestly, Gary. I just want. I just want to see people in 3D. I mean, that is literally my, <laughs> my thing, right? <laughs> Gary, I just want to find out how tall you are. I've only ever seen you sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come more of these, and I'll be lying down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question uh, from Lisa. Will the virtual expo hall be open during day zero events again? So yes. Monday and Friday for virtual expo. So yeah. <clears throat> yes, it will. Um, and you can check the sp sponsor portal portal for those hours. Okay. Cool. Okay, so Bill, during both, because um, there's two day zeros now, right? So it's <laughs> correct. <laughs> yes. Day negative one, whatever you want to call Monday. So it's open yes. Monday all the way through Friday. Correct. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, what is the current split between in-person and virtual registrations? Um, I actually don't know off the top of my head. Um, virtual was, has been trending ahead. Um, but again, as I said before, we are expecting a big jump in registration numbers, um, including in-person after uh, the schedule announcement going out today. Um, and then also with our health and safety updates and this blog coming out, um, you know, we hope to uh, people will feel comfortable and confident coming on site. <clears throat> and we will share more information as we get closer to the event because I'm sure everybody's trying to, um, you know, plan for their in-person booth as well as their virtual booth. Yep. Um, um, it, it just going back to the numbers that we have in the, um, the sponsorship prospectus, we are planning for 6,000 attendees um, on site and 15,000 virtual. Um, so those still are still the numbers that we're planning for. Cool, thanks Vanessa. Um, next one from Lori, which vaccines are acceptable? Um, it's all the ones from WHO, so you can find it um, on this slide. Uh, Di Diane, how much time should we tell people to allocate for testing, checking vaccination records prior to coming to co-located events? Um, that's a great question, Diane. Uh, we are still working through that process. So let me get back to you on that. Um, yeah, let me get back to you on that. Yeah, because I'm thinking we can start our event at 9 a.m., which is what we were hoping to do because of we want to do broadcast it for folks in Europe too. But um, if we have to start it at 10, because it's going to take an hour to get through the line. Sure. That's, we'd like some heads up on that. Yep, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, again, we're working through uh, this check-in process, so we'll share more information soon. Cool. Um, so the next one is from, hey, this is Phoebe from DigitalOcean. We're sponsoring KubeCon and we're planning to attend in person, but decided this week to only attend, participate virtually. We may send a small team uh, in-person team as we have an accepted speaker, but we'll decide later in <laughs> August or September, just sharing for those um, that are interested. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to share that out because it seems like some folks are curious about like what are other companies doing right now? And I just wanted to be transparent, you know, with what we're doing. But 
one thing I would say is it's really it is really helpful to hear that there are other companies that are are making the business case for attending in person. We all really want to be in person. I mean, everyone is so excited about being back to in person. But um, Digital Ocean has just decided this week to not sponsor or attend events through the remainder of 2021. So that is the new policy. And we had already embarked on our sponsorship of DigitalOcean, I mean, of, um, of um, QCon before we, before this decision was made. So we're kind of flipping it a little bit. So like before we planned to be in person and we had a contingency plan for just scaling back to virtual if things didn't work out that well. Um, but now we're kind of flipping that and you know we're planning to attend virtually but we have a contingency plan of sending a small in-person team since we have an accepted speaker and maybe doing a social event so um just wanted to share that with other folks who are trying to decide what to do too cool thank you um yeah, another shout out from Connie. The health and safety protocols have been communicated and outlined clearly throughout the whole process. Um, very much appreciated from the sponsor side. So um, yeah, once again, the events team is has everything in good hands. Um, another question, uh, Vanessa, will you be doing on-site rapid tests? No, we will not be doing that. <clears throat> um, we would direct someone to uh, a local healthcare provider if uh, someone was, um, you know, showing symptoms or not feeling well, um, we would direct them outside of the event, but we won't be doing it ourselves. Um, yeah, love the bands that indicate comfort with social distancing. Um, maybe I missed the part, but what is the overall capacity for the onsite? Um, Kristen, do you mean the capacity of the venue? Yeah, I think that's the question. Um, yeah, the overall capacity of the LA Convention Center is over 20,000 attendees, um, but we are planning for um, about a third of that in order to be able to allow for social distancing, um, you know, set our breakout sessions and keynote rooms um, to give that space, providing extra wide aisles, um, and allow some social distancing between chairs. Vanessa, if, if the numbers for, I mean, not bad numbers, good numbers, like people registering for the event grow, will you actually consider capping it at some point to keep that ability to social distance? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, we may have to, we may, can, we probably will consider that. We'll work with the LA Convention Center and the LA um, Department of Health. Um, we are in active communication with them about, you know, what is the safest and the best thing to do. Um, so we're just continuing to monitor the situation and um, and make adjustments as we need to. So yes, that okay. will be a consideration. Okay. Uh, another question: How will you handle contact tracing? Um. This was just updated in our health and safety. Give me just a minute and let me find that so I can answer that question. Um, I do wanna point out also on the health and safety page um, that was just updated, we do have um, an FAQ section um, that has a lot of really good information there as well. So if we didn't get to something on today's call, um, there is a lot of information. Um, we, hang on. Um, let me get back to you on that. We can share that information. Um, it, it's being, it will be dictated by, um, you know, third parties to the extent that it's required by local health um, requirements and regulations. Um, so let me let me get you the exact answer there. Great, thanks, Vanessa. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, just raise your hand or ask them in the chat, and we can follow up. And also, thanks again for the events team for I think really putting together uh, another great event, but also uh, hopefully a, a very safe and um, yeah. Um, 
uh, event where everybody can feel safe and enjoy hopefully meeting each other once again. So with that, we have 15 minutes left. So it's now <laughs> a test of how fast I can speak. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, thanks Vanessa. Um, once again, obviously, thank you to all of our sponsors. This event wouldn't be possible uh, without you. I don't have time to read every single one, but I would like to thank our diamond sponsors, Cisco, Google Cloud, Casting by Veeam, uh, Microsoft Azure, Red Hat, and VMware. Uh, now we are doing the sprint through the co-located, not day zero um, events. Uh, so there's Cloud Native eBPF Day. Uh, there's EnvoyCon, uh, both on Monday. There's Production Identity, uh, Spiffy Inspire, uh, ComCon North America, and Supply Chain Security Con um, all on Monday. And then jumping over to Tuesday, there's Cloud Native Security Conference North America, GitOps Con North America, and Cloud Native DevX Day, uh, Cloud Native Wasm Day, um, FluentCon North America, Kubernetes AI Day uh, North America, and Service Mesh Con. So if you haven't added at least one co-located event to your registration yet, um, which I strongly consider doing it, I, I'm having a hard time choosing between all the different awesome events to go to. Uh, the other thing is the uh, CFP for uh, Open Source Summit China is still open. You missed it for KubeCon Cloud Native Con uh, China, but consider going that. Uh, and once again, the event dates are December 9th and 10th. Uh, events that we'll be going to um, are Grace Hopper OSS uh, Conference, Oktoberfest, Google Cloud Next, J4K Conference. Um, and that's what we're doing through the end of the year. And obviously KubeCon, um, <laughs> in case you missed that one. A short update on the Kubernetes Community Days. Um, the next ones that are coming up, in case you're interested or they're in your region, is KCD Korea on September 9th and KCD UK September 15th to 16th. Um, you can always submit uh, your event today or check out uh, which other ones are being planned on the project board or reach out to me um, on the Slack or by email if you have any questions about the Kubernetes Community Days. Uh, the next part is membership. We would like to say welcome to our whole rash of new members. We're super excited. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but there is a bunch that jumped in. Everybody wants to be at KubeCon, uh, as we found out earlier on this call too. Um, a lot of them joining to be members too. Um, especially shout out to our new end user supporter members, Solonis, Robinhood, and Niantech. Um, for helping us create uh, end user driven open source. Uh, member acquisition slides, uh, this has been updated, but it's been a bit slow. I expect this to pick up going more into KubeCon, so uh, stay tuned uh, for the rest of the year. Training and certification. Um, we have a really exciting update for our KTPs. Uh, you can now submit to be on the Search Magic show with Siam on Cloud Native TV. Uh, there's the form there if you're a KTP and would like to apply to be on a show and talk about the different certifications and maybe highlight some of the trainings that you can offer. Um, some of the KTPs are also looking to submit a session for KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU, and the CFP will be opening for that pretty soon. Um, super excited um, to have some more uh, talks about training and the great um, certification that and the benefit it brings to the community. So if you're interested in doing that, um, I encourage you to submit to um, uh, KubeCon. Um, more updates will be coming in our next meeting. If you're interested in getting involved in training or KTPs, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, the introduction to Kubernetes course is now over 200,000 enrollments. I think that's the biggest excitement and update from this slide. Um, CKA, almost at 60,000 updated to Kubernetes 1.21, CKS uh, almost at 7,000, and the CKAD at almost 30,000. So with that, uh, it's content marketing, and I'll hand it over to Christy. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for running through the slides so quickly. I'm really um, glad that we had the time to talk with Vanessa and her team and also get those updates from Charlie. So. I too will try to go as fast as possible on these. Um, you might have heard Charlie reference the online programs. This is our, our webinar program here if you're new. Um, just a couple quick stats here. 
on uh, that um, program and how things are going. Um, if you are interested in booking a slot or you might be new to this program, then you can use the Calendly link here in the slides. Um, we also have an email alias. So if you have any questions, um, our team would be happy to uh, help you and get you scheduled. I'll also make the note that we are going to be opening up the uh, calendar for Q4. So if you click on the Calendly and nothing fits with your uh, schedule with the upcoming couple months, um, stay tuned and we'll open more dates shortly. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide, please. All right, so you might notice this slide looks a little different than it typically does. Um, this kind of alludes to what Charlie was talking about earlier in that um, we heard you, you want greater transparency to see how your blogs, how your case studies, how your online programs are doing. And we are working on the functionality on the back end to be able to give you that access. So this is just kind of a sneak preview of what's to come um, using our blogs here. Um, stay tuned for more updates. I don't know, Charlie, if there's anything I missed on this one, anything you want to add? Um, no, just that, yeah, thank you so much, Rishi. Yeah, we, we did hear you. We're going to have these available actually on our website soon. Um, so you can click through to them. Um, you can also search um, by certain date ranges. So this is all based on the Google Analytics at the back end um, of the CNCF website. So we've got analytics set up for the blogs. Um, we've got them set up for case studies. Um, and we may have a couple of others coming in the future. Um, but again, we'd really appreciate your feedback in this first couple of months if there's other things perhaps that you'd like to see or different things that you might um, like to have access to. And again, you can reach out to, to me personally or anyone in the marketing team um, with any of those questions. Awesome. I'm really excited for this to roll out. Um, and here's just a quick update on Cube Weekly. That is the uh, weekly Kubernetes and cloud native newsletter that we send in conjunction with a group of editors from various companies. Um, as you can see here, uh, we did have a, we moved from MailChimp to HubSpot back in April. So we did have a little drop as the list cleaned up um, as we moved things over, but overall things staying pretty steady on this front. Um, and on to the next slide. And with that, it's uh, PRAR. I don't know, Jesse or Chad, if you want to talk through some of these. Jesse, hey. Hey, Jesse, um, go for it. I'll go pretty quickly too. Um, we just had, we had some really great feature coverage this last month. Um, this, in, in case you haven't seen it, this um, fast company uh, byline from Priyanka is worth looking at. It just talks about um, open source mm -hmm. and diversity. So um, that published, I think, earlier this month or last month. And then, um, this was also, this was from um, last month, if you recall, we came out with the uh, FinOps um, survey results. And so this was actually just a result of the PR team's outreach, um, which included um, some commentary from Chris. Uh, and it's also, it's a, it's a pretty interesting article worth reading. Um, and then this third one is also from um, the tech that we had last month. Um, we pulled together a really nice, um, uh, podcast from the new stack on the fifth tech radar, tech radar report um, for multi cluster management. And this had Cheryl and Meltwater. So, um, a couple of great articles. And then, and then just this last month, we had, um, we had Linker, or just, yeah, last month, um, had Linkerd graduate and got a bunch of really great coverage. It's actually still coming in. So, this was definitely a huge interest for media. And then um, I'll just hand it over to Trisha, who can talk through this quickly as well, analyst relations. Yeah, sure. I mean, just um, just to let you all know, it's Gartner hype cycle season. If you haven't seen that, it's all over social and LinkedIn. Uh, what, what Gartner does is they're creating nearly 100 hype cycles this year, and they do it across various domains as a way for clients to track technology maturity and future potential. Uh, they use the hype cycles to get educated about the pro promise of an emerging technology within the context of their industry and the individual's appetite for risk. What's interesting this year is we did a little bit of keyword searching um, and cloud native shows up as a keyword in over 60% of the hype cycles. Um, I haven't looked through all of them, obviously, but I did notice with the cloud um, compute hype cycle that um, cloud native is approaching the peak. It's still in the innovation trigger um, section, but uh, that's telling us that um, it's definitely something that Gartner is now recommending that everyone be looking at and considering in, in their technology investments. 
Uh, CNCF was cited in 11 reports from Gartner and Kubernetes was cited in 25% of the hype cycles as a keyword. So this again is just telling us there's a great groundswell among um, all the projects. And if you, um, uh, you know, I encourage all of you, if you want to look to see if your company is listed as a sample vendor, that it's some great ways you can promote that for free. Um, so just let your teams know or, or reach out to me and I'm happy to guide you through that. So other highlights just real quickly is, um, again, we just curate some of the highlights because there's so much coverage. Uh, and so we've just covered some of that here. And um, just in light of time, Jesse, we can click to the next one. Uh, you can see even more here. So feel free to click down. Any of the blogs are free. Um, if you have a subscription, uh, a lot of the reports are behind gated, at, um, uh, behind gates, they're, they're behind paywalls but the blogs and things are free and there's lots of free webinars out there as well. So uh, with that, I'll hand it back. Yeah, and this is just, um, anyone can click through this just to see the key messages that are coming through. And then on the next several slides, it's the graduated projects, the incubating projects. And then I also added in here the sandbox projects. So you guys can see. Um, note that the sandbox projects are in two different slides just because um, we can't put them on one slide. So that's why there's a little bit of a, it's a little confusing, but there you go. Cool, I'm gonna come off mute. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so we do have about four minutes left. We ran through that pretty quickly, I'm happy to say. Um, there's a question in the chat from, uh, Sevilla, um, where do we get a list of the marketing team and what they do so we know who to email when we have a question? Um, <laughs> okay. um, it's probably best to most of, um, yeah, one thing is we're working on that. Uh, another thing is most of the programs have an alias. Um, so if you go through this deck, like if you're thinking about case studies, then I'd reach out to you case studies at cncf.io, uh, kcds is like kcd at cncf.io. The alias is probably the easiest way to get in contact with the right person um, rather than like, um, and that'll get you started. If you have any other questions, there's also info at cncf.io or reach out to really any of the marketing team um, members. Um, like, and if we're not the right person for the program, we'll direct you um, to uh, the, the right person. So yes, we're, we're, we're looking to improve that. Um, but yeah, it's all part of improving the process. Um, and here are like all the links. One thing I did wanna say is there's the building your brand session with CNCF. Um, so we're gonna be doing an updated one for KubeCon, CognitiveCon North America. Um, last time we had, I had a great partner in crime uh, with uh, Sheila. And if you would like to be doing this talk with me and actually Charlie too at KubeCon CognitiveCon North America, please reach out to me. Um, and we'd like to have another member like highlighted in uh, the building your brand with CNCF and talk about uh, what you've been able to accomplish with CNCF. Um, yeah, and with that, um, we finished just on time. Is there any other questions that people have? Feel free to raise your hand, ask it in the chat. You can drop off now if you don't have any questions. Uh, we're here to help you out. Um, so one that we have um, for new members, is there a way to get to up to speed on all the CNCF programs? I apologize in advance, it's already on the website or marketing portal somewhere, we're just getting started. Um, yeah, so the first thing I would recommend checking out this session. Uh, this gives you an overview of all the different programs and how to get involved with them. It's three months out of date, so not too bad. Um, there's also the new member welcome deck. I don't know, Christy, like, can you drop that in the chat maybe? Um, yeah, I'm also going to drop in. Uh, we have a Calendly for new members who want to talk specifically with Bill and myself about marketing programs. So I'll actually add the link to the Calendly in the chat as well for you. Yeah, thanks, Christy. Um, any other questions, hand raises, um, comments? would like to say. 
Bill, do you have a joke? I feel like we didn't even have a joke today. <laughs> Oof. Uh, the biggest joke today was my time management. You know, I just had to <laughs> really speak to at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> out it. I'm I'm on summer vacation from jokes. You know, it's it's August <laughs> in Europe. We're like barely even working. <laughs> yeah, I gotta prep that uh, material for KubeCon uh, North America. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Again, like if you have any questions, you can reach out to Bill or myself. Um, we will take this recording and get it uploaded um, within the next 24 hours. And then we'll have the slides um, available for all of you as well. Yeah. Cool. Thanks everyone. See y'all.